In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask you for pardon of my sins and grace to make this time of prayer fruitful. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me. Dear brothers, in this meditation, I want to help you and myself look forward to an extraordinary day, Maundy Thursday, the day that is so important for us as priests, the institution not only of the Eucharist, but of our priesthood, the very reason for our existence, that extreme grace, that extraordinary grace that we have received. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, God the Father. Thank you, God the Son. Thank you, God the Holy Spirit. Thank you for the gift of the priesthood to the world, to your church, and to us individually. And brothers, I want to, to focus on this conference and focus on this feast very much from the, point, from the point of view that as priests we are both sheep and shepherds. Now of course we like to think of ourselves uniquely as shepherds. We lead our poor sheep, our people. We're in charge. They're the ones who easily get lost and we have to go after them to find them. But then it's striking and, and sobering to hear these words of our Lord from the Last Supper. Jesus, you said, you will all fall away because of me this night, for it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. And you're saying this, Jesus, to your apostles, to your apostles. Yep, to us as priests, as collaborators of the bishops, collaborators of the of the apostles. You've just made them priests. You've just given them the power to perform the Eucharist. The, the versions of Luke and 1 Corinthians give us the account of Jesus saying, do this in memory of me. You have made us ministers of your Eucharist, Jesus, to carry out this sacred rite, this giving of your body and blood under the form of bread and wine. You transmit this power to your apostles. So that's what's just happened. And then we read, And when they had sung a hymn, they went out to the Mount of Olives. And then you quote this prophecy from Zechariah. The, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. As much as we like to think of ourselves as shepherds, the fact is, we are sheep. We're weak. We're fearful. We too need our shepherds. Above all, you, Jesus, the Good Shepherd. And in that garden, on that night, in Gethsemane, all those would be shepherds scatter like frightened sheep. The very same night that gives us the institution of the priesthood, of the shepherds, also shows them straight away as terrified sheep. Now, we are shepherds. That's undeniable. That language recurs in the New Testament to describe priests. It comes up on various occasions. There's that lovely moment when Paul gathers together with the elders of the church in Ephesus <clears throat> and he says to them the following take heed to yourselves and to all the flock in which the Holy Spirit has made you overseers to care for the church of God which he obtained with the blood of his own son now there's a lot of a lot of depth there it is a lovely episode. It's, it ends with the, all these overseers, these elders, um, kissing Paul, weeping together. 
because they know they won't see him again. It just tells us something about how lovable Paul was, how much he made himself loved. But anyway, let's just focus on one particular aspect of this, where St. Paul talks to them as overseers of the flock, so clearly a shepherd image there. Overseers, the Greek is episcopus. Now that could seem more like a bishop, although in Acts there's never a clear distinction between bishops and priests. Episcopoi and presbyteroi is not, the, the, the distinction hasn't yet been made totally clear, so it could be either. And they're told, Paul tells them that they are called to care for the flock, uh, to care for the church. And again, the, the, the verb there is literally shepherd, poimenine, to shepherd the flock. They've been called to shepherd the flock. So very clearly a, a shepherding image. In St. Peter's first letter, there he's speaking to the presbyteros, the elders. And again, he tells them to shepherd the flock, the same verb, poimenoi, to shepherd the flock entrusted to them, willingly, not for base gain, not lording it over them. St. Peter describes Jesus as the chief shepherd. Jesus, that is you. You are the, you are the good shepherd. You are the chief shepherd. And <clears throat> we want to take care of the sheep faithfully in your name because we love them tenderly in you as you love them sharing your love Jesus help us to share in your love give us an ever deeper love for the flock for the sheep help us really to see them as our sheep or Jesus your sheep but we share in your love the Holy Father often calls on us to share the smell of the sheep because that's not easy these days we're going to have to share it electronically over the internet or through the phone however i also know that many of you are busy with funerals in this difficult time and those of you who can are trying to um to be involved in hospital chaplaincy and other forms of support it did strike me however that it is um it is a very good time to bond even more with our people and I know many of you are you're finding all sorts of wonderful creative ways to to keep in touch with your people here's an image that helps me and might just help you it's really just a development of our Lord's own image of uh, the sheep and the sheepfold Jesus uses the image of the sheepfold the sheep pen he is the door to the fold now if we think of a sheepfold, at least uh, my best efforts to, speak, to think of a sheepfold as urban as I am, um, I think of a small walled enclosure, strong enough and high enough to keep the wolves out, and therefore doesn't necessarily need the physical presence of the shepherd all the time, precisely because the, the pen, the fold, the enclosure has those sort of sufficiently high and strong walls. I think in many ways our churches and our parish life act as that sheepfold. Someone within the life of a sort of a decent fun uh, functioning parish is usually pretty safe from the wolves. But now our churches are closed. The sheep in a sense are outside the pen in a sense. Um, so it needs much more the presence of the shepherd. The sheep can be happily, comfortably outside a pen as long as the shepherd is there and vigilant. He keeps an eye on the sheep and he keeps the wolves at bay. Indeed, the wolves even seeing the shepherd keep a distance. And I think this is what God is asking from us as shepherds these days, to keep a more vigilant eye on our sheep in new and creative ways, through the telephone, through social media. This is not a holiday. Let's not in any way see this as a holiday, even less in 
Holy Week. We've got to be very vigilant, very active to take care of our sheep. If the shepherd is there, the sheep are happy. They feel safe. They don't miss the sheepfold. It's even, as I said, a great time for bonding between sheep and shepherd. But if the shepherd is not there, if he's not there with his sheep and the sheep are outside the fold, then the sheep are in grave danger from the wolves. Jesus, Lord Jesus, good shepherd par excellence, help us to remember to feel ever more deeply our mission to be shepherds. We're not just providers of services, albeit sacramental services in a building. We're not just sacred caretakers. We are shepherds. And you told us, Lord, the good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. And this in coronavirus or not. This when physically confined or not. Of course, in some countries we are seeing that, particularly Italy, for example, you know, that in all sorts of ways, priests are literally laying down their life for the sheep. I think of Cardinal Van Thuan, apologies to anybody who knows Vietnamese for my probable assassination of his name, but I think of Cardinal Van Thuan, that great Vietnamese bishop imprisoned by the communist government. And he wrote, talking of his time in incarceration, it caused me great torment to be in prison while the people were abandoned. That is the heart of a shepherd. Jesus, give us that heart. Give us a, a heart that really <clears throat> is concerned, that's ever more deeply concerned for our sheep, who are your sheep, Jesus. May we share your heart. Isn't it, didn't the curé does say that priesthood is to share the heart of Christ? Lord, you wouldn't take this confinement as a holiday. I know you wouldn't. You would be, you are deeply concerned for your sheep and you're calling on us as your as it were your assistant shepherds to to help you take care of them i think also of these wonderful words of pope francis he said this was in holy week three years ago to take on the smell of the sheep means to be out among the flock entrusted to the priest personally close to them it means not simply being available in the office or celebrating the sacraments, as central and primary to the priesthood as that is, but being engaged in the lives of parishioners and others in the community. Powerful words. Now again, to be out among the flock these days can't be physically out and about. We have to be out among the flock by the phone, by the internet, but we can find ways. And I'm very touched and very impressed really to, to learn of all sorts of wonderful initiatives that so many of you are having. I know a number of you, for example, is a lovely idea. A number of you have got your uh, parishioners to send in photos and you've printed them out um, and you have photos of your parishioners on your church benches. What a lovely idea. A way for you to have your people ever more in your heart and prayer. All sorts of other initiatives too. Uh, different groups using different means of technology to, to have group talks and group get-togethers and group worship and group prayer. Of course, some of you are live streaming your masses. All sorts of ways you are keeping in touch with your people. Jesus will, will be so happy with you. He'll, he'll love you even more. He'll bless you even more. So yes, we're shepherds. There's no doubt about that. Jesus, you've called us to be shepherds in your name. But also, we are sheep. Weak, fragile, in need of help. We go to other priests to be shepherds for us. We are sheep and shepherds to each other. We try to be very united to the bishop, who is our most 
a major shepherd on earth. It's not a question of personality, but one of grace. The grace he has received through Episcopal ordination to shepherd the flock, including his priests. We are both sheep to him and his assistant shepherds. Now I know that in this recollection you are precisely doing that, you are seeking support. So in many ways I'm preaching to the converted. You're not the ones I need to tell. There's perhaps other priests who are not so keen or able to receive support. We can all think of brothers of ours who just don't seem to reach out for the support they need. We pray for them. Let's see what we can do to reach out to our brothers in this time. Is there, are there any brother priests that I can reach out to? Not so much as a shepherd, but as a fellow sheep. I'm not. A sh I'm very conscious that I'm not a shepherd to you. <clears throat> I'm just a, a brother sheep who is hoping that his barring and his bleating uh, might be of some service to you. Let's be humble and accept our need. Our need for spiritual guidance, which these days will probably have to be over the phone. Our, our need for receiving formation. Again, I'm preaching to the converted. Here you are now receiving formation. But um, we all need formation. I need formation very much, all of us. And then keeping our eyes closely on the shepherd wherever he leads, hearing his voice, hearing the, the whistling of the good shepherd. When I was a boy, I wouldn't say I used to enjoy because I found it boring, but at home we would watch um, one man and his dog. Um, and at that, that age, I'd watch whatever was on with my dad. Um, and perhaps some of you remember it. It was this program, um, probably only could be viewed in Britain, um, of precisely sheepdog trials. And, um, you know, you'd, you'd get the, sh the dogs running all over the place and, uh, and, the, and the farmer, you know, incredible, the different forms of whistling they had. It was very impressive. Um, all sorts of different styles. Some were whistled louder, some were more restrictive. Um, and it is amazing how the dog responded to the, the, the whistleblows of the shepherd. Quite was also amazing how the, the sheep responded to the dog, or perhaps not amazing, but they did. Uh, and the dog really sort of guided the, um, the sheep following the instructions of the shepherd. Well, Lord, we want to be both your sheep, souls in need, and both your dogs, really. You know, we are your, Jesus, we are your sheep dog, and we want to be very docile to your whistleblowing. Docile both, as it were, as your assistants, guiding the sheep and docile also as your sheep to be guided by you where are you leading us now these lovely words you told us from the gospel of john of course the if you want to pray a bit more about more deeply about this whole idea of sheep and shepherds then the, of course the best place to go is john chapter 10 you could pray about that yourself and there you say jesus to him the gatekeeper opens the sheep hear his voice and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. I think of that moment after the resurrection when Mary is there weeping at the tomb, Mary Magdalene. And she's, um, she's as it were, locked in her grief. As it were, emotionally speaking, she's still inside the tomb. And all it needs, Jesus, is for you to say her name, Mary. And that's it. She's now out of the tomb you've you've led her out you've called your sheep by name and you've led her out you've led her out of her grief Jesus do you need to lead us out it might be to lead us out of discouragement it le might need to lead us out of our being so very disconcerted these days possibly paralyzed perhaps um, do you need to lead us out of any selfishness or laziness or despondency, fear. Jesus, lead us out. Lead us out. Simply call us by our name. In our vocation, you have called us by name. You are mine, you said to us. I've called you by your name. You are mine. Call us by our name. Even our nickname. St. Hosea would say that, that God calls us by 
our name, um, our nickname reminds me of a amusing episode that happened when I was in seminary in Rome, in the Opus Dei seminary, um, and there was a very amusing uh, African seminarian there, one of our my colleagues, uh, Laurent Mazingi. I remember him very well from uh, Congo, I think, and he had a sort of rather sharp and cheeky sense of humour. Um, nothing naive about him, and um, once. Some, you know, he'd, I think he'd just arrived and somebody was trying to get to know him better and so trying to be nice to him um, and um, they um, you know somebody said to him, you know, what, what's your name and he said his name Laurent um, no, but you know I want to call you by what your mother calls you, you know, what, what does your mother call you and he said okay in that case fine you can call me sweetie pie um, of course teasing um, well our Lord calls us by a name and he's calling us out. Jesus, how are you calling us now? What are you asking from us in order to follow you in the midst of this epidemic? He leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. Lord, we want to know your voice these days. We want to know your voice through deeper prayer, through meditation on Scripture. We want to hear you. Now, the book of Revelation, um, as it were, makes the plot even thicker by its focus on Christ as the Lamb, who is followed, we're told, particularly by the celibate. So we go to the 14th chapter of the book of Revelation, and the seer, St. John, sees this vision of the 144,000 who had the Lamb's name and the Father's name written on their foreheads. Um, they sing a new song. And no one, we're told no one could learn that song except the, four, the 144,000 who had been redeemed from the earth. And then we read John, uh, sorry, Revelation 14.4. It is these who have not defiled themselves with women, for they are chaste. It is these who follow the Lamb wherever he goes. These have been redeemed from mankind as first fruits for God and the Lamb. As I said, these seem to be celibate souls. So it gets, as I said, the plot thickens really. You know, these, these poor shepherds of yours, Jesus, sorry, these poor sheep of yours, Jesus, who are also shepherds, will follow you, the Lamb, wherever you take us in this time of trial. You know, it's not just sheep and shepherds, but there's, there's a lamb who, as it were, there's a lamb who shepherds. We could even say that there's a lamb who shepherds the shepherds. It all gets rather confusing, but it's not confusing. There's a great sort of mystical sense there. Jesus, you are the lamb. You are the great shepherd. You are both lamb and shepherd. And we as celibate souls we as your priests are your assistant sheep or your assistant shepherds but also your sheep who follow you wherever you lead us they follow the lamb wherever he goes where are you leading us today certainly in italy there have been some priests quite a few um, who have been led to death who have died of the virus Jesus, help us to be ready to follow you wherever you go. These days it might be you want to follow us to a deeper prayer life, sorry, follow you to a deeper prayer life. You want us to follow you to a deeper, more creative um, service of our people, a deeper initiative, finding new ways. You know, we can't, as various people have said, you know, the church can never be the same after this. Yes, it must be the same in the sense of the centrality of the Eucharist, the centrality of the Mass, uh, focus on confessions. Yes, that can't change. The fundamentals can't change. Um, but there are all sorts of new ways that can come in. We can find new and creative ways, perhaps particularly making use of uh, the internet to reach out to our people. Help us to follow you, Jesus, to new and creative ways of evangelization. 
The shepherd has a mother who loves his sheep. That mother is you, blessed Mother Mary. When the sheep were scattered on Good Friday, Our Lady gathered them together. That's why I think the whole significance of Holy Saturday, of course, which is the day dedicated to Our Lady, definitely for one reason, that Saturday comes before Sunday. Um, so likewise, Our Lady chronologically comes before Jesus. But there's also the sense, I'm sure, Mother, that you kept the church together on Holy Saturday. The sheep had been scattered, but you, Mother of the Shepherd, you gathered the sheep. We can imagine you in different ways, sort of bringing them together, bringing the, the apostles together. Well, Mother, we pray that you may gather us together as priests so that we can be faithful sheep and faithful shepherds to our people. I give you thanks, my God, for the good resolutions, affections and inspirations you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask you for help to put them into effect. My Mother Immaculate, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my God and Angel, intercede for me. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's uh, say a Hail Holy Queen. Uh, our last time, as it were, before we then move into the Regina Cheddi, our, our last time uh, for a while. Hail Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, hail our life, our sweetness and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this veil of tears. Turn then, most gracious Advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the fruit of thy womb, Jesus, O clement O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy of the promises of Christ. And finally, a memorare. Remember, O most gracious Virgin Mary, that it is a thing unheard of that anyone ever had recourse to thy protection, implored thy help, or sought thy intercession, and was left forsaken. Fill therefore with confidence your goodness. I fly to your mother, Virgin of Virgins. To you do I come, before you I stand, a sorrowful sinner. Despise not my poor words, O Mother of the Word of God, but graciously hear and grant my prayer. Amen. We pray, Mother, that prayer particularly for all those in need, all those suffering, all those dying alone. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.